So I'm just um, getting situated with NFB uh, connections here and getting my daughter in school. She's five and a half. Um, so, you know, connecting with people virtually is definitely important to me right now. Um, and then Georgie will be talking to us about accessible games and um, ways that we can connect with people online as well. So um, this session will be recorded and will be available on the nopbc.org website after a couple of days. Um, so if you need to go back to it or refer to it or share it with friends, you are welcome to do so. Um, and I would really love for this to be an interactive session. So if you'll raise your hand and Danielle, our host is gonna be monitoring and <clears throat> will let us know if um, someone wants to raise their hand, but I would really love to, for it to be a dialogue and not just um, Georgie and I, you know, spewing information at you, but really for it to be a conversation. So um, I really would like to just open it up and hear from you. What, how have you been connecting and getting um, socially, being able to socially interact in the era of COVID? I know that it's been a challenge um, for our family, and I would imagine it is for a lot of people, but I would love to just start it off with if anybody wants to raise their hand and um, share some creative solutions that they found, whether it's through an app or a website or Facebook or whatever. Um, how have you been able to connect with people recently? Tammy has her hand raised. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Sorry, I unmuted at the same time as you guys unmuted me. <laughs> um, so we've been staying pretty active, actually, during this time. Um, uh, I already homeschooled my daughter. And so then, um, since a lot of other people were at home, we actually had a friend of my daughter's who um, would join us every day to FaceTime and read a book together. And um, just because it was still part of my daughter's curriculum um, and we had like a schedule to keep, I started reading them aloud um, while before we were doing the talking book services. Um, but mm -hmm. I didn't know if that would translate over on FaceTime for her friend. So mm -hmm. I just started reading aloud. We read a bazillion books at the end of the school year with her friend, and we still have been FaceTiming and reading daily together, even throughout the summer, because we've enjoyed it so much. Yeah, um, totally. yeah and then I think another kind of unique thing that my daughter and I started doing is we were doing, um, we would do a Facebook Live bingo game on Thursdays. Mm -hmm. and. So going to talk about bingo. <laughs> is that right? Um, yeah, that's awesome. I love it. Yeah. So, and we even had some uh, blind friends who would get their own Braille bingo cards. And then um, we just had one of those cages that the balls roll around in. And so my daughter would read off uh, what, what she had just pulled out of the cage. Yeah. And people would you know, chime in when they would get bingo or they'd let us know how many they needed or, you know, what they needed and that sort of thing. And so there, most weeks we had like seven to 10 people on, but there were a lot of people who were like, oh, I go back and I just watch it just because it's fun to watch you guys and the people interacting. So, so yes. So, so, uh-huh. I, 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 I do Oh, and my daughter also joined a group that was meeting virtually that she had not been able to meet but with before, a Young Life, um, a Christian youth group. And so she was meeting with them on Zoom. She meets with them once a week. So it was kind of mm -hmm. funny because I said my daughter's social network actually grew during the COVID lockdown. Yeah. <laughs> but... Oh, that's cool. <laughs> It's nice to find some positives in the midst of all the changes everybody's been going through. Right, exactly. But it was just, it was just kind of fun to be able to um, add a student to our little homeschool group when we would be reading aloud, so. Yeah. That's fantastic. Next up, Thanks so much for sharing. Yeah, absolutely. Next up we have Mr. Greg.
Greg, if you could just unmute yourself. Okay, I think that worked. I think yes. that worked now. Okay. There you are. We can hear you. Okay, I was doing home health care for mom since 2013. She was in the uh, nursing home right before Thanksgiving. So I was over there with her most of the day. So I got pushed out of the nursing home when the uh, COVID thing came. And so uh, at that point, he uh, was there. It helped a lot of these things they've been doing in the afternoons. Uh, I've been doing some things on Facebook with dementia care groups and others. So I've been expanding through face group. Uh, and you know, basically uh, talk, you know, seeing how to you know, communicate with other people through that. And this app has been great. I've been seeing all the possibilities. I hope they keep this app going during the year because there's a lot of, you know, it's easy to connect with people. Of course, we Zoom with the NFB chapter meetings. I've been doing some uh, grief meetings and some counseling meetings with that too. But uh, that's probably not the best thing in the world to communicate, but it's helped a lot. And I do uh, work with some dementia care groups to help people and some cord cutting, help them save some money on things. But I think apps like this are very good because a lot of places don't have too many, you know, blind people and whatever for a peer group. And this enables you to get some camaraderie and some people, you know, peer group wherever you are. So I think it helps a lot. Uh, not the most interesting thing in the world, but there it is. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's fantastic that I think it's opened up a lot of doors to be able to connect with people that we wouldn't necessarily have been able to before. So, I mean, even this convention, there's more people that are able to participate that maybe wouldn't have been able to attend in person. Um, and so even though it's a different format and we're all having to adjust to that, it's been really phenomenal to see how many people are participating um, virtually. So that's fantastic that you've been able to connect that way. And it's helping you meet a lot of people too. You, help a lot, you, you help to meet a lot of new people too, because there's a lot of people that I wouldn't have been able to meet. Uh, I couldn't have gone to Texas this year. I couldn't have afforded it. I don't know where it'll be mm -hmm. next time. I'm going to keep this up. They said they'll keep this up virtually. Uh, it would be nice if all the 50 uh, you know, safe chapters could have this in their commission so that once a month people would have a place to gather and talk to one another. You know, just mm -hmm. uh, on this app, it's really easy if you use the uh, you know, that platform app. They've got the Encompass. That makes things really easy. Uh, so mm -hmm. it works really good. Uh, just thought I'd give it a plug there. Yeah, that sounds <laughs> Thanks for that feedback, I appreciate it. It's very true though, that now that things are virtual, it's so interesting that like what you're saying, I mean, I agree, we were reaching people that we just weren't reaching before. Like people feel for a lot of different reasons, like they just are participating, you know, like on a more level than before COVID. Mm -hmm. It's almost a case of like this silver lining sort of becoming a silver cloud. Like it just sort of, is become even more than just, oh, we're just finding this slight positive. It's a real, actually really great thing that we've discovered that we can reach more people, you know? It's exactly. really good. And if you go to the Maryland meeting every morning, then they have like an hour where they read the agenda and they try to give all the Zoom numbers and everything. If we could just practice, like once a month, um, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, practice using this and everybody would have a much easier time of it because they're trying to braille all the numbers and they're getting all the trade you know, uh, codes and all, but this makes it really easy. You don't have to know any of that. Pick your agenda and you go to your events and schedule everything and you can get a hold of people. So if we could just get everybody to use it, I figure if everybody uses it once a month between now and next convention, we'll all know how to use it. So uh, more totally. of this. I want it to stay around too. This, this agenda, I've never been happier with an agenda before. <laughs> you know, it's fantastic. It's fantastic. You just get the menu. Just get your menu and your Encompass app, in the, app, the uh, attendee app, get your menu. goes down yeah. and then you find the agenda. It's got all the Amazing. dates and times there. Go right in there and set up your, uh, it'll remind you when it's coming up. It'll put on your schedule. If you want to go right there, just press Zoom. It takes you right into Zoom. It's amazing. I love it. It's so good. Very similar, I feel, about with the Bell programs, doing them virtually this year. You know, before I, I just moved, I'm living in Louisiana now, and we have a huge Bell program. But before, I was living in a state that didn't have one at all. So when they went virtual, that was the first thing I thought was, oh, there's kids in these states that have never been able to go, that now this is their first chance to actually be a part of this. You know, it's, it's, a, it's great. It's really great. We have, a, we have a technology user group in Maryland. Uh, meets every second Saturday. Now, if they would, now they're on a conference call, but if they would put it on this, uh, then it's a, uh, a countrywide technology user group. And that would be a good thing to have if they don't want to do it. If, and if you would, mm -hmm. uh, 
and uh, advocacy and so forth, maybe once a month or something, because it's easy once you get going. And you can uh, think of, you can message other people with this as well. I understand. I haven't tried it yet, but I understand you can. Yeah, um, you can you can like find a participant by their name and reach out, even if you don't have you know you don't have their contact info in your own phone. You can still contact them through the app. It's really cool. Yeah, there's a lot. Of, there's a lot of uh, a lot of things this app will do. Yeah, I wish we could get everybody. I think we'd have more participation because there are people who are still typing in numbers even now, probably with all the workshops and all, who won't get into one of them. Uh, mm -hmm. So I them yesterday, but some some persons couldn't get in because they didn't get the numbers right or whatever. So the attendance looks good now, but it might be even better. Uh, so I, I hope they certainly hold at least next year's convention. They have this alongside the regular convention, and I'm kind of hoping they uh, do something every month with it so people practice. You know, not not just let it go, but. Uh, then everybody will be an expert with it. So that's my two cents worth. Awesome. Thank you. There's n there's no other hands raised right now. Okay. Oh, Tammy. Tammy just raised her hand. <laughs> Tammy's back up. Hi. Um, I just thought, I don't know how many people um, do like a, a Wii, the, the, the video games, the Wii consoles. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many people still have, I have that. a Wii. Okay. I have old school well, Wii. What's up? There you go. <laughs> so um, one of the things we also, we live like 1800 miles from our family because we live in mm -hmm. Nevada, but everybody else is back in the Midwest. Oh, yeah. And so even prior to this, we've done a lot of stuff distance in order to stay in touch with our family. And um, so we've always gone on like just on a Saturday afternoon all of our family has Wii consoles as well. And so we'll all set up our own bowling game in our house. And then, you know, you have your, whatever your beverage of choices or whatever, and we'll sit <laughs> around and we'll take turns bowling and we'll be like, oh, I got a strike or I got a spare or whatever. And then, you know, you're just chatting and hanging out and bowling together and we'll be on for like, two hours <laughs> a long time yep yeah. and you know you get done and you feel like you've been hanging out with your family during the day and stuff so that's another suggestion i have if people have you know if their can kids are like i haven't seen my friends you know or something like that if you maybe have something that you can can share um even rolling yahtzee like if everybody has their own Yahtzee game and some dice and whatever, you can just FaceTime or Zoom with them while you're playing the game and take turns and you kind of feel like you've been a part of it together, so. Yeah. Totally, that's exactly, actually, that goes right into what, I, what I'm here to talk about. Nice. But, uh, yeah, no, I, I agree. I think like people don't realize if you're all playing the game together, even if it's virtual, it does feel the same. It really yeah. does feel, there's no difference except that you're not in a physical bowling alley. Exactly. But you're still, yeah, you still have each other's company. You still get to have the competition. You still, you know, it's just better. I mean, even when you don't have COVID, there's so many advantages to just yeah. doing it at home, you know? Like, yeah. it's, it's great. A lot of people have been doing that. The FaceTime, the Zooming in. The thing with Zoom to keep in mind is so if you're doing a big group on Zoom, you do have to have, you can't use the free account for that because, you know, free, right. you can only do a one on one unlimited yeah. call. But, you know, if one person has or two people go in on a Zoom account together, you know, and they can share the bandwidth and everybody can pitch in and you guys can all, you know, that's what a lot of blind friends of mine have been doing is Zooming and playing online games. Like you mentioned, Yahtzee, a lot of those games can be played. There's accessible ways to play them online using JAWS or voiceover. And it's great, like dice games, card games, um, Connect Four, Chess, Battleship, lots of games that, you know, are just, it's, it's great. You can go on and they have sound effects and they all, it talks and everybody's just playing together, you know, and everybody's on the phone and talking and teasing each other. And it's just a fun, fun time, you know? Great. Next up, we have Ashley. Hey, um, 
I am Ashley. I am from Alabama. Um, and I kind of wanted to piggyback on what Tammy was saying. Um, like her, um, I have most, most of my family is all back in Arizona. And um, so we do a lot of, we, before COVID, we did a lot of distance communication. Um, one thing I really enjoy for my daughter, um, she's younger, she's only seven, is um, the Facebook Messenger for kids. Um, it is, it's like completely parental control and they can add their friends. You have like, all, the parent has all the notifications come to the, their uh, like phone or their account. Um, so you can see like who they're trying to add to their thing. You can make sure like, you know, you know, you know who they're talking to and, um, and I use that for my daughter because, um, like I said, we actually don't have any family here in Alabama and my mom and all my family is back in Arizona. So she likes to definitely use that to have like video chats with my mom and um, all her cousins. And it's really nice because it can be a quick conversation just like through like a chat, just text, or you can send little clips, little videos. Um, it has game on it, so you can play like, um, there's this drawing game that she likes where you have to draw a picture and then the other person has to get what it is. Um, and it's really cute, you can set, send, you know, little clips of music or videos, um, stickers, things like that. And it's all, um, it's all, you know, parental control. So she's not doing anything that, you know, could possibly get her in trouble, like with the internet or anything like that. Um, so that's one thing, especially if you have younger kids, um, they don't really necessarily know, like, you know, what an ad is and accidentally click on it or, you know, something like that. They don't have ads and things like that on there. And it's nice to be able to, even like if she talks, we usually we use weekends to talk to my mom, do video chats. And like even in the week, I'll still get a not notification from there and it'll remind me if you want, if you want to see who she is, has been talking to, here's a list of people who she's been talking to. And so, like, if she gets on and I don't know, like, it'll still tell me, you know, even a couple days later, like, oh, she's talking to this person. Or she sent, sent a video or she played a game with this person. And it's nice to have that control, but let her actually be able to still communicate with her friends and stuff like that. Um, and it helped, too. She was in Girl Scouts. I had just enrolled her in Girl Scouts for the first time and she really was excited and really enjoyed it. And we did get a couple events and things in before COVID happened, but she was becoming really close with the girls in her troop. But um, so she was kind of, her time with them was kind of cut short. And um, so what we did was made a, a group, I think it's called Group Me and it's an, another communication mm -hmm. app. And all right the girls up. are able to, yeah, and our troop is on there, our whole troop is on there, so all the adults are on there to be able to communicate, but also the girls can, um, we share our girls' messengers for Facebook Messenger, and so she can talk to them too. So it was really nice that it has, you know, built-in games and stuff that they can do with that. Um, and then also, like Tammy was saying about um, playing games um, virtually, uh, my uh, Alabama affiliate, we have been doing um, just about every Friday, we've been playing different games. And it's really fun because um, I'm still kind of new to Alabama and I'm, I'm, I'm very new to NFD. I've only been um, a member for a year um, and I've been low vision all my life. So I, and I don't know why I never heard about it before, but I'm very happy that I found NFD and um, I love that Zoom has brought a lot of people, especially in my state, to, for me specifically, to be able to learn to um, meet new people that 
you know, in other cities that I probably haven't, I've not traveled to, I haven't, you know, um, really explored past my city, but um, to meet some of these people and to play that who are also in an FB and we, um, we do trivia games. Um, we've done like uh, music trivia. Um, we've done television shows. We've done um, Jeopardy. And basically they're like, like Jeopardy games um, or, you know, things like that. And it's actually really fun, um, you know, and we get good turnouts with that and just hang out and have fun. And like she was saying, like, you could pretty much play any game virtually. Um, mm -hmm. Just get everyone, you know, there's always some, just like, you know, our own lives, we all, we adapt to learning how to do things in different ways because of our vision. Um, and, you know, I get, and it kind of, in a way, it kind of shows the world now that there's ways to adapt to things because now everyone's kind of forced to adapt to virtual everything. So, you know, and we've all had to adapt to our lives being basically virtual and it's, it, it is pretty easy once you actually get into it and, you know, kind of force yourself to think, okay, how can I do it this way? And, and it turns out really fun. Like I have a lot of fun and we'll have prizes for the winners and, things like that and you know people we we have a lot of good laughs and things and I get to meet new friends that I probably wouldn't have really before this because you know we would basically keep to our own chapters until like a state convention and um so that's nice that I've actually been able to get become close and make friends with other people in different cities in my state um, because of Zoom that I wouldn't have been able to really do until convention time before. So that, that is, has become real important for me because since NFB is so new to me, it's really helped me with everything. Um, and this is my first convention, my first nationals. Um, I've had a great time. Yesterday I was on four different calls trying to toggle between other sessions that were done at the same time and <laughs> I life. even asked one of my chapter my chapter president I asked her you know can I log in to, to di different sessions on different devices and she's like no unfortunately not and I'm like I want to be at like three meetings at one time <laughs> but it's definitely been a great experience so far and I'm really excited to be a part of these sessions so but yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm having a great time with this. And I really think, you know, anything really can be done virtually as long as you, you know, put your mind to it and be create, be creative about it. So that's a couple totally. tips that we've been doing. I really love the kids messenger thing for, from Facebook that helps the younger ones keep in contact with their friends from school and things like that. That's awesome. Welcome to the NFB, first of all, first <laughs> and foremost. You. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> um, the other cool thing about um, with GroupMe, just, I mean, this is kind of way thinking ahead to the future, but I mean, truly a lot of jobs now use GroupMe. I'm in a lot of GroupMe groups for work and like the younger your kids get to using GroupMe and getting familiar with it, the better because one day they'll be using it, you know, in a whole new way and it's a, just a completely accessible app. You don't have to be able to see one ounce, you know, to use it. So it's cool. And so, and f so is Facebook Messenger. Like anything that you can find that's just completely non-visually accessible is ideal, you know? Um, and those are good ones, good, just good skills for them to be practicing coming, you know, going forward for networking, for work. It's all gonna, you know, there's a lot of skills that come through in games and in virtually connecting that people just don't even think about that this is really good practice for them, you know, for going forward. But Next awesome. up, we have Vejas. And I would just like to add that I also have the kids Facebook Messenger for my son as well, who's 10. <laughs> and I, I do like the control features that you have. Um, hi, so um, I'm Vejas and I am a uh, currently a 
student about to actually start graduate school, but I um, just wanted to bring up some ideas. So something that I really enjoyed when I was younger was um, text adventure games. They came mm -hmm. on my Braille note and um, you could download some more. And I believe there's certain apps now on the iPhone that allow you to play text adventure games where you're put in certain situations and have to act and do certain things. And the nice thing about them is that um, you don't necessarily have, like a lot of times you play on your own. So like, it's nice because you don't have to be as concerned about like who your uh, kids are interacting with because they're playing the game on their own. But then if they want to, then you can securely set them up with other people probably who are into the games and they can talk about them in a safe environment. The other thing um, that I find um, is really helpful for me now, um, which I would suggest more for like a late teen adult child is um, discussion forums of things that people are interested in. Like I'm in, I'm on two, one for creative writing and one for um, a certain type of music that I really like to listen to. And both of those are really useful, especially because um, if you're on them before coronavirus, then the discussions, like you're pretty much doing kind of your normal thing and you kind of end up kind of knowing people and it's just a really cool way to connect with people. Awesome. I'm so glad you mentioned text adventure games. <laughs> um, I used to be obs completely obsessed with them as a kid on my Braille note. They unfortunately <laughs> they don't they don't put them on the newer Braille notes the way that they used to. There are games on them on like on the touch and the Polaris and the newer devices, but they're not the they're not the good old days text adventure games, but you can, you're right. You can get them on the phone. You can get them, you know, on your computer. And a really cool thing you can do with those is like you can FaceTime in with a friend and then just, you can, you know, you're, they are one player games normally, but you can just take turns, you know, just read it out loud. And then if you're doing braille, your kid is practicing their braille skills. It's great for practicing O&M skills. Those text adventure games are just fantastic because you're doing so much mental mapping and you're doing a lot of problem solving and critical thinking it, they're just there's a lot of good that comes out of those games and they're just really really fun and it's they're great and it is it's good that you can play them alone too I mean you can do it however you however you want to but they're yeah completely agree they're called interactive fiction games if anyone ever wants to look them up it's they're old school but you can definitely grab them um I think what you have to do is download a specific kind of you know like software that will unzip them for you but then you can go on to like the interactive fiction archive and download them all for they're all free um so it's it's they're really really fun we have no more questions at this time awesome Well, one thing I would definitely, so one thing I heard come up a lot, like that I think that I was actually already sort of had in mind um, with this talk is the whole idea of like privacy, parental controls, like how can kids play these games? And, you know, how can you as a parent kind of keep an eye on things? I think that's really, really important. Um, so a lot of the online games that you can play, there's two in particular, like two, um, can't think of what they're called, but two kind of game rooms where you can download these accessible, you know, play these accessible games like, you know, Uno, Bingo, Connect Four. And one of them, both of them actually, you can make the game room for your kid private so nobody can join it. Um, and then one of them, you can actually go and change your settings. Like, so you as the parent can change the default settings so that nobody, like no one who isn't already, a, you know, like a known friend on your kid's friends list can even contact or be on there with them. So there are a lot of, you know, there's a lot of stuff that you as a parent can do to kind of impose that sort of those like boundaries and make sure that, cause you know, you don't want them out talking to just random people on the internet, especially when they're really young. I mean, you really don't want it much at all in any age. Um, but you know, the, the two main apps that people use are RS games and Quentin C's game room. Those both have privacy features that you can put in as a parent. And actually with RS games, you can get a transcript of any game that your kid does. So if, you know, if you're worried about something fishy going on, you can go back and look and read through like 
you can just read through the whole entire game and see what went down, who said what, when it happened. Um, and so there's a lot of features like that that I think do make them um, a little bit more comfortable for kids, for younger kids um, to play these games. Because a lot of the games are geared towards, I mean, it's Uno and Bingo, you know, they're games for young kids. And so the apps have to sort of have that in mind of how our parents can let their kids play these. Um, but yeah, RS Games and Quentin C's Game Room, they both have a lot of features like that and they're both completely accessible. Like you don't, like I said before, you don't need any vision at all to play them. Uh, I couldn't catch okay, what the you. second okay. one, something okay. game room that you were mentioning. What was that called again? Okay. It's yeah, no problem. It's called Quentin, like Q U E N T I N, like the name. C's like the letter C game room. Quentin C's game room. It's kind of hard to remember, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, cool thing about Quentin C's too is it comes in six different languages. So you know, if anybody here is bilingual, or um, you can play in Spanish, and French, and all that. And I think, how does it, uh, Quentin C's has 33 different games and RS Games has 26. And there's some overlap, like they both have Uno, they both have Battleship, but there's some that are only on one or the other. Like I think RS Games has Connect Four, um, Quentin C's has, you know, Spades. Quentin C's has a few pretty obscure games, but I mean, a lot of my favorite games growing up are on there, like Scopa, Cribbage, you know, games that, that like a little more obscure and what's really cool is it's there's a lot of like sound effects and stuff like um like if you're playing 1000 miles i don't know if you've ever if anyone's ever played that but it's a card game if you're on there when you get like your green light card it's like like your little engine revs up and stuff like there's lots of or you're playing uno and you get the reverse and it'll be like like it makes lots of like little fun noises and it's it's just really cool um and a lot of a lot of adults like them too. They're not just for kids. A lot of my friends play them. Um, but yeah, Georgie, could you spell Quentin? C totally. Okay. It's Q U E N T I N space C as in cat apostrophe S game room like game room, and they're both free. And so. Quinton's is only on like a computer. You'd have to play it on the computer. But RS Games, the other one, you can play that. There's an iPhone app, so you can play it on an iPhone. I will say it's more accessible on a computer. It just interfaces better with keys. <laughs> um, but they do, you know, they work with, it does work with VoiceOver and JAWS. So whichever one your kid is using. Um, and I mean, if you're, if they're not really a JAWS, user yet I mean you know you can do it together and read it with them it's not a not a huge deal at all okay. we had two people raise their hands while you had that conversation it was Tina oh, and see. Melissa so first up is Melissa hi great um I just I came in very late actually so um it says the session is recorded so where can I find it isn't it? I think it's uh, NOPBC. It's going to be on there on the NOPBC's webpage, I do believe. And is um, it going to be uploaded right away or like will it take time? For it to no, probably. I mean, I'm just going to give my best guess is that it probably won't be immediate. Like it might be halfway through or after convention. Uh -huh. um, okay. But it'll it'll be on there eventually for sure. All right. Thank you. Yeah, and no problem. The games you suggested, like the websites you suggested sound pretty cool. I'm going to check them out. Right you should, time. dude. They're great. They're so, so fun. RS Games and Quentin C's, they are both so fun. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So um, Cassidy is up. Tammy lowered her hand. Oh. Hi there. Um, I just came in too, but um, another game that I feel like would be good for kids. Um, I don't know if it has like privacy features. It might, it should. Um, is called Survive the Wild, and it's it's a kind of adventure game, but it also cool. has it has sound effects, and it was actually developed by a young uh, man by the name of Sam Toopy. 
I think he was 15 when he developed it, so. Awesome. Um, and so you can What's get it. What's it called? Adventure the Wild? Survive the Wild. Survive the Wild. I'm writing it. I'm checking this out. Survive the I Wild. I don't have children, but I play it. It's okay. Awesome. I'm, I don't have children either. I'm going to play it. <laughs> I'm a full-on a teacher. Awesome. Thank you. Yep. Love it. Georgie, there was a question in the chat box. Um, what you got? Are Quinton C's and RC games accessible on both a Mac and a PC? So, no. So, okay. RS games is accessible on both. RS games, you can play any kind of, you know, Mac, PC, iPhone. So Mac OS, iOS, or Windows, you can play it. Um, like I said, it's better. It's best on a computer. Um, but you can. You can do it on an iPhone. Um, Quentin C's, I believe, is only for Windows. So if you're a Mac user, that is some tough luck. But you can play RS games. Um, and I mean, you know, contact them. Contact Quentin, advocate, and say, hey, we want it on Mac. I'm sure they'd be happy to do it. Okay, and then we have Wealth up next. Um, hello, um, I'm using a Braille Note Touch. Is it available on the Braille Note Touch? So what you could do, so you could do it on your computer and do use your touch as a terminal, like put it into terminal mode, and then you'd be able to read it in Braille at, you know, in, in real time, kind of using your touch as a display. So I don't believe you can play it on the touch without having it connected to your computer though. I have a touch as well. And I've always, that's how I've always done it is just connecting it to my laptop. Yeah, sorry. But there are games on the touch um, like built in already, other games. Mm -hmm. Great. And then we have Alec up. audio now on news okay can you guys hear me yes okay so what i've been playing lately is that to get it's a mud type game so it's a, it's a text input and you use uh, a mud tunnel client to connect to it and it's called cosmic rage Ooh, and it's okay. in, uh, mud so awesome cool I've been that's a good one the six or seven months now so cool so it's so you would highly recommend it <laughs> oh yeah it is it, like if anyone's looking for a really good uh text-based game that's multiplayer and that really cares about their players that uh, cosmic Rage is really good for that it's really good so and they do take cosmic out a Rage? feedback that players give them so cool and you said what's the name of it cosmic rage what's that What's the name of it? Co is it Cosmic Rage? Yeah, Cosmic Rage. Cool. Okay. E -O -S -M -I -C space R A G E, I believe. Gotcha. Like space, but angry. Cosmic Rage. Yeah. Got it's it. Really awesome. Fun, so. Thanks. Thanks for sharing. I'm going to check that one out too. This is great. I'm getting more out of this than I'm giving. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Mary had her hand up next. Let's do it. Um, I have a question. Are there accessible games for Braille Note Touch Plus? Because I have Braille Note Touch. Gotcha. So there are some games. I don't play the ones on the touch that much. I'm not going to lie. But there are some that come on the touch. I believe there's like a, like a game section on there that you can go to. And then the ones that are, we were like the text adventure ones, you could definitely put those on your touch because back in the day, you used to be able to put them on the apex. Um, so I'm fairly certain that you could, you might have to do a little bit of, you know, Googling, to see how to do it. Like you'd have to download a, you know, a certain kind of software to unzip them for you most likely. But once you did that, you should be able to play those on there. Um, but with things like RS games, I believe you'd, you'd have to connect it to your laptop, which you could still do. You'd be on the touch. It would just be, you know, Bluetoothed into your computer, essentially. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Good old brand new touch. No other hands raised at this time. Awesome. So another 
great place to play games is Alexa, by the way. Like that's, there's a lot of really cool Alexa games. Um, somebody mentioned Jeopardy earlier. That one's really fun. There's an escape the room game on Alexa that is insanely fun. Um, and some of them, you know, some, you can only play part of it for free and then you have to, you know, you'd have to pay for part of it. But a lot of them you can do just fully for free. You can do 20 questions. You can do, um, you know, some games that honestly previously wouldn't have been very accessible, like let's make a deal, things like that. Like things that I'd never, like shows that I'd never watched because I thought of them as so visual. Then the Alexa game comes out and you can, you know, play it on there. So that's another great one where you can, FaceTime with somebody and just take turns, you know, using your Alexa, just take turns who's giving the commands, things like that. But any game on there, I mean, obviously it's a speech based device. So any game on there is going to be accessible for a blind kid or a blind adult like me. All right. I think Michelle has been having some technical difficulties. <laughs> uh oh. Uh oh. I, I'm here. I'm, oh, there she is. Yeah, I'm finally here. <laughs> oh. um, yeah, I've been able to listen. It's been great. I'm really enjoying the conversation and making notes as we go along. And um, like I said, my daughter's only five, so we're at the early end of game playing. Um, so it's been great to hear everybody's feedback and information. You start playing games when you're young. Games are so educational. Like, it's amazing. Like, I mean, I just don't, it's something I think we really don't think about, but you know, chess and battleship their grids and that's they help you know get kids especially when they're young they and you have a totally blind kid doing things like having some you know picture the chessboard in your mind and where the pieces are moving it's really comes into play later when they're out on the streets with their canes doing O&M you know or mm -hmm. playing braille with braille cards that's a great way to you know kind of get them practicing braille in this way that doesn't feel so academic you know and teaching them you know just teaching them the etiquette of games like okay when you play cards you're not gonna put your cards down on the table because if you're playing with a sighted friend they can see them it's just really good to get them it really can help them think about other people in relation to themselves and you know it, they're just great I've just always I've been a big game player like my whole life and I always felt that was when I really felt very like equal you know with my sighted mm -hmm. friends was with games it really put me on an equal playing field because I knew I knew the rules and, and we all kind of knew how we were going to play together and we'd have to adapt things sometimes, you know, especially not so much with virtual games, but, you know, back with real life games, you'd have to come up with workarounds, but we'd always, it was a great kind of beginning of advocating for myself, you know, as a, as a blind kid to say to your friends, like, Hey, since I can't see the cards, is it okay if you read them out loud? You know, when you play your, when you put your card down, it's just a really, these like sort of soft skills that are going to be so critical as your kids get older, they're just great to introduce them in a fun, in a game, you know, and just slip it in casually into their days. Yeah. That's awesome. No, it looks no. like we have several hands raised. Yes. Cassidy, would you like to share? Hi there. So I discovered um, back in December that games like Uno you could actually find Braille Uno cards mm -hmm. in places like Target. Yep. That's a new the thing that I, Uno's doing. Mm -hmm. The reason I found that out was because um, I go to a four-year university right now, and one of my friends, actually a couple of my friends, they're fully sighted, and they went out and they bought me this Uno deck. Aww. <laughs> and That's awesome. I realized that it was an NFB Uno deck. Nice. Nice. And I was like, oh my goodness. I, I Wait, almost where did get this? That's so great. They were like, dude, like, let's do this so we can all play, you know? Yes. Like, I love that. I love that. So, so cool. But yeah, that's also great that, Great to tell the whole group. Yeah, Uno. Uno you can buy in the store off the shelf. And next up, we have DeWaze. DeWaze. I'm so uh, sorry. DeWaze, please. <laughs> you can just call me D. <laughs> that's what they call me. Hey, <laughs> Um, I just want to say I am also a great game player, too. I love playing games. And I say I would say the games I've experienced, I mean, my favorite is Blackjack. But I was saying we could definitely be friends. Oh, and yeah. We, we could uh, Blackjack all day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, um, 
Yeah, that's what I wanted to say. And also, I want to point out that you could also play Mad Libs on an Alexa. Oh, Mad Libs. Writing that down. I'm writing that down. I have a student who loves <laughs> Mad Libs. I am very excited to know this. Going straight on the Braille note. I'm glad I'm gay. I gave you some information. <laughs> Thanks, girl. Thank you. You are welcome. Yeah. And I will love you. Next up, we have wealth. Um, I had a question earlier about um, downloading games on the Braille Note Touch Plus. Mm -hmm. And um, the answer is I do this all the time. I've, since we've been stuck at home for the past month, I had decided to you know, play, play around on my Braille Note Touch. And I had discovered that you can go to the Play Store and go to this website. Well, you have website, you type in, well, you go to search, and then you type in this website called Choice of Games, and it has all text adventure games you can read. You can read. Great. And, uh, well, all of them is not free. Some of them is. That's great. There you go. There you go. Every All the touch users out there. That's how you do it. Play Store. Choice of games. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And then we have Amy, and I just wanna give you a time check. It is now one yes. forty-seven. Okay. Um, so um, I just wanted to ask the question of, um, I have a group here in Missouri that we have, um, kids of all ages and we have some sighted and with it and I know like with some of the games that I've seen you have to have voiceover on to be able to to play them so I'm trying mm -hmm. to find some games that will work for all the whole group totally um, I have sighted kids that you know want to you know do everything like they think that the blind kids are the coolest kids now um Gosh. and stuff like that <laughs> Love it. Love it. Good job. <laughs> Trying to find um, something that, that, you know, like the RS games, I hadn't heard about that, but I don't know if that's something that, like with the, when you guys were talking about blackjack or like, I know like there's the dice game, but those, you, you have to have voiceover. There's no visual component to it. So I just looking for something that um, so can do with do, the, the, um, You could do, so the Alexa games would be ones everybody could play for sure. There's um, Dice Dice World on the iPhone is a, is an accessible one that's also visual. You know, like um, you don't need voiceover on your iPhone to play it. There's pictures, and you know, you you can do it all visually. Um, that one's really fun. It's it's just it's it's only like five. It's I think it's five different dice games. You got like Yahtzee, Farkle, Pig. You know, all your classic dice games. But that one is definitely something they can play um, with sighted and blind kids. I think with RS games, I might be wrong. I, you're right. As a, as a blind person, you need JAWS or voiceover. But I think, I thought you could play it as a sighted person. I thought that there were words on the screen. Is that, are use, there no words? Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yes. Oh, trying to get unmuted. Sorry, this is Tabby um, in Hawaii. I'm sitting here with my blind daughter and she said that, what's that? What? Um, RS Games, the iPhone app, it's uh, built-in speech, so it doesn't work without speech. Um, oh, okay. And also the okay. RS Games client on desktop doesn't have, like, visuals at all, but the website Shoot. does. Um, okay. Do work? Quinton's then. Quinton's no. does. Quinton, C C Quinton C's Game Room, that definitely has visuals. Do it. Like, I've played that with sighted people before. But you and can there's... play. I play RS Games with her on rsgames.org like rsgames.org on the website it has words mm. so you can follow along as a sighted person gotcha. but it's not the visual stimulation of a game that a sighted right. may be looking for so you just kind of right. give, give them those heads up she mentioned another one what did you say on the app uh there's an iphone app called game world and yes. it's like affiliated with dice games um i think and yeah it it supports sighted and, and it works really well with voiceover. Awesome. Thanks, man. Good stuff. Game World. There you go. Game World on the iPhone. That's good to know. Because that is that is sort of a, 
a thing that comes up. It's like, I don't want, you know, them to just be playing with other blind kids. Like blind and sighted kids should be playing together, you know? So it can be, it can, that's, that's important. That's very important to know. Game world. I'm going to ask Amy because she's a touch user. There was a question about what games are on the touch. I have no idea. Okay, she can't help I us with that. <laughs> I know I, I have a touch, and I don't really play the games on it that much. Um, the that someone else earlier mentioned that you can get them through the Play Store. You can go through there and download um, some text adventure games on there. So well, maybe check those out. The text adventure games are fun. But, but I mean, I used to play them back in the day on my old Braille Note. They are. They are some kind of fun, those games. I love them. So, Emmy's, how old are you now? 13. So, Emmy's 13. Speak up so they can hear you. So, what this session is about is how to stay connected, virtual ways, mm -hmm. socialize with your friends from a distance. We just yep. moved to Hawaii from Virginia, so we kind of cover that, that distance pretty well. What are, some, what are some tips that you can share with the parents on what things their kids can use? Come over here where they can hear you, though. Um, just like chatting apps mm -hmm. um, on the phone, house parties fun because like a lot of kids these days use it. Like it's a kid app, not a kid app, but like a teenager app. I don't know how to explain it. And when Emmy's referring to kids, she's the only blind kid in her friend group at school. So she's gotcha. talking about things that are inclusive with blind kids and sighted kids. Um, Perfect. So like house party, it's a lot of people don't like house party because people accidentally like friend people they don't know but if you don't do that it's like perfectly safe there's nothing wrong with it but mm. it's not completely voiceover usable but it's like one of those apps that you have to learn the ins and outs but once you do it's pretty mm -hmm. much useful. cool house party i played crazy party i've never played house party uh it's crazy it's party. like a like a little video chatting app where everybody gets on there and talks to each other Gotcha, 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 gotcha. It's like like group chatting. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. There games on there. I've never tried to play them. So for the parents that are out there and you're looking for things that your younger kids can do, one of the best things that we did for Emmy, we have five kids. Emmy's the youngest and she's the one in our family that's blind. And so one of the things that that we did is we set all of the kids up with iPhones. And the reason being is because the iPhone is accessible out of the box, but then the sighted kids have the use of the phone and then the blind kid has the same use of the phone. She just has to learn to use it in a different way. And totally. so what was really interesting to watch as they unfolded as children, what was interesting to watch is that Emmy did the same things with her friends that her older sisters had done with their friends when it came to phones and communication and you know, staying in touch with them, like after school, like when they come home. So they still, the kids are, are the blind kids are still able to chat and to participate in groups with their friends. And really what it does for our blind kids is it helps them learn those skills. Great. So true. Agree with everything you say. <laughs> Next up, we have D and just a time check reminder. It's almost. Yes. So. You want to do D and maybe one more and then call it a, call it a day? He's the last hand I have raised. Oh, fantastic. Nobody else raise your hand. <laughs> <laughs> Keep them down, guys. Keep them down. Um, and you, I'm going to touch on quickly. I'm going to touch on quickly another app that you can use um, to talk with friends and connect with other blind people. But I would just recommend please be careful. Um, but it's called Dabble, and it's spelled D-A-B-E-L, and it's a live audio streaming app. Dabble, all right, D-A-B-E-L, live audio streaming. Okay, just got to be careful with privacy kind of stuff. Like and there sure are some you know weird people to. in the blind community that's on there. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, maybe like for older kids, that might be for older, like yeah, maybe like, you know. Older. Yeah, yeah. It is something, though, to think about. I mean, if your kids are ever going to be, you know, doing things on the internet, it is worth having that <laughs> conversation about, you know, who can, who's okay to talk to? Is it okay? You know, you kind of want to decide in your own house. Is it just, we're not talking to any adults at all? Or, you know, maybe it's okay if it's an adult I know is friends with one of my parents. 
you know, like you're mm-hmm. going to have to come up with those, you know, with, with younger kids, you're going to want to kind of set those controls in your, you know, case by case with your family. But for sh- good warning, good, pri- it's always good to know. <laughs> yeah, um, another quick question, because you do seem cool. So outside of here, like, what are some other ways, like, we could talk? Oh, because here, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Here, here, I'll put my, um, I was going to do this for y'all anyway. I'm going to put my email in the chat in case anybody has questions about games or anything in the world. Um, Because oh, I would like to be your friend. And, uh, yeah, girl right back at you. So I I didn't even introduce myself, y'all. So I'm a student at Louisiana Tech right now. And I'm a teacher becoming a teacher of mine students with like an O&M background. So you know, if anybody ever wants to reach out to me about literally anything, O&M, Braille, tech, games, I'm, you know, a blind person, been blind my whole life. Advice. Advice, life, you know. Yeah. And speaking of all of that stuff, do you have a Facebook? Because I can put my. I barely um, use it. I'm not gonna lie. You can you can add me, but it'll it'll be a. Put my name there on the private uh, message you on Zoom. My name, so that way you could add me. Perfect. Perfect. I'm gonna put my number in here right now. Awesome. Well, we appreciate everybody's time and just sharing your ideas. It's been great to hear all the different ways that you're connecting and all of the different game opportunities that are out there. Um, it's, it's really fun to hear um, the, the options that are available. So we thank you so much and hope you enjoy the rest of convention. And like Georgie said, you're welcome to, re- she's way more knowledgeable. Otherwise I would be happy to share my information, but I don't know anything. So. <laughs> uh, oh my gosh, don't sell yourself short. <laughs> no. Well, put your email <laughs> down too. <laughs> yeah, I can put my email down too. But anyway, we thank you so much for your time and hope you enjoy the rest of the convention and have a great day. Thanks for participating. I love active participation. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye.